Hello and welcome to Nomad Overland. My name is Ben. Thank you for being here today. Here are the top 10 things to avoid when dealing with vehicle breakdown. In other words, how do you keep your vehicle from breaking down when you are out overlanding? What precautions should you be taking in order to do that? Let's jump right into the video with number one. Number one, regular maintenance on your vehicle. Regular maintenance on your vehicle. I don't care what car you, you, what vehicle you're using, if you're using a Toyota that's supposedly bulletproof or a Land Rover that typically just falls apart every 10 feet, it doesn't matter what you're using, make sure you have regular maintenance. So oil changes, filters, fluids, any fluids, uh, you know, your, your, uh, your AT fluid, uh, oil, all, you know, everything, right? Uh, brakes, belts, hoses, battery, all of those things need to be checked on a regular basis to make sure that you are, uh, that your vehicle is up to date. You don't want to be in a situation where your fluids are creating the problem, okay? So preventative maintenance on your vehicle by checking your fluids. That's number one. Number two, number two. Uh, carry spare parts uh, and tools in your vehicle should something actually happen, okay? Now, uh, you could also carry extra fuel, spare tire, and a basic toolkit, okay? I'm not going to go into what could be in a toolkit, but put a comment down below, and if you want me to talk about that specifically, I will do that on a future video for you. Um, but yes, certain spare parts might be a good idea. Um, for example, uh, hoses. Um, as long as you have done number one and you've checked everything out and your hoses are great, fine. But hoses can go on you uh, if they, you know, they they wear out and and they bulge and burst and oh, it's a it's a nightmare. So that could be something. Uh, to uh, to do, especially if it's on a long, long trip. Number three, learn basic mechanics of your car. Uh, changing a tire, uh, replacing a belt, uh, troubleshooting electrical issues. Those are things that you want to kind of tinker around in your vehicle a little bit just to figure out how to do those things. Um, you... Nine times out of 10, you know, these things can be done in your driveway and you just, you know, kind of look at how things uh, work. Go and take out your, your lift jack or whatever you have and take off a tire. Uh, put on the spare tire. Make sure the spare tire has proper air, right? If it's been sitting there for a while and you haven't put air in it, when you put that tire on the on the vehicle, it's probably going to be low air. So you want to make sure that you have the proper PSI on there. Okay, all of those little things you can do in your in your driveway to get you ready, just so you don't feel anxious about doing them. Right. Number four. Uh, comprehensive toolkit. Now, I did talk about a basic toolkit, but a comprehensive toolkit. Um, this is if you are, you know, if it's not just the occasional sort of thing, but you are out for days and potentially weeks at a time, um, having this comprehensive toolkit in your vehicle or as a team, if you're going as a team, maybe splitting up a comprehensive toolkit. So, this group here takes this stuff and this team over here takes this stuff. That certainly is uh, an option. So wrenches, pliers, screwdrivers, tire jacks, tire iron, socket sets, hammer, D duct tape, or don't forget duct tape. Oh my God, keep, keep it in there. You know, keep that as a part of your toolkit. It can be a lifesaver for so many things. Um, but those are, those are just some of the things that you should be including in your, 
in your, your toolkit. Now, in terms of expense, how much do you want to spend on this, these different parts? That's totally up to you, okay? Um, in my thinking, uh, actually more expensive is better because you are going to get a better quality piece of tool. And the one thing you would hate is your cheap $2 screwdriver to start threading the screw because it's not, it, it's, it's too soft, right? The metal is too soft and it's not doing its job. So you want to be able to look at uh, tools for the long term, you know, this is not a short-term investment. It's a long-term investment. You could have these set of tools for the rest of your life, whether you're overlanding or not. So in terms of how much should you spend or what particular tool company you should go for, I can't, that I can't tell you about. Um, but I would suggest to do your due diligence and set a budget for yourself and figure out how much you want to spend. Okay, good. Number, number five, number five, uh, recovery kit, um, winch, toe straps, D shackles, shovel, tire board. Um, now these are sorts of things that are not necessarily related to your car breaking down, but your car getting into a situation or your vehicle, I should say, getting into a situation where you cannot extricate your vehicle just on its own power. Right? Got that? Now, yes, these things are important and they're going to help you in a pinch. However, common sense would dictate maybe not going into a situation that would require you to use these tools in the first place, especially if you are on your own, okay? Don't put yourself, if, look, if you think that you are in, uh, you're getting into a situation that's making you uncomfortable, just stop, put the car in reverse and back up, right? Don't put yourself in a situation or you're or a vehicle, or a situation that your vehicle cannot handle. Now, if you have a group with you and you have a spotter and people are around you giving you directions, that might be different. But solo, yeah, I would make sure you're following your gut instincts on, on being out there. There's nobody else out there to help you. So be careful. Don't be don't be stupid and get yourself into, into some serious issues. Okay, uh, number six. I already just kind of talked about this, but it's important to make a special note of it. Use quality parts when you are changing things out in your vehicle. So let's say if you, um, let's say you're changing out a belt, okay? And you have the choice of two different belts. Uh, one belt is $10 cheaper, one, one is a little bit more expensive, uh, but the belt that's $10 more expensive is used with a higher grade uh, rubber and it will last you 20,000 kilometers longer. Spend the extra $10 and get, the, get that one, right? It's worth the investment because it's not going to snap on you um, or it's, it's going to last longer while you are out out and about doing doing your your overland stuff. Um, I have I have been fortunate not to have uh, anything fail on me while I'm out there, but I do tend to pick uh, products, uh, the oils, the the liquids that are going into the vehicle. For example, I tend to try to buy a higher quality because I know that the vehicle it's not going to suffer because of it and I'm going to be in a better position to actually get through my trip. Okay, number seven, uh, regularly inspect your tires. Regularly inspect your tires, all your tires, not just the ones that are presently attached to the axles, <laughs> right? So um, what does that mean? Uh, uh, obviously the ones that are on your vehicle you want to make sure that you're looking for tears, bulges, um, 
you want to see if there's any damage to the wheel itself, not the tire, but the wheel itself that could indicate a problem with the tire. Um, you want to look for uh, your, your in, uh, the, the, the tire inflation, like how much PSI is that tire supposed to have. Make sure it's set to the appropriate PSI. This is especially true when you're driving on road because let's face it, 80% of our driving is on road to get to the 20% that we want to go and do. So making sure that we have the appropriate uh, PSI will allow uh, for better fuel economy on the road, regardless of what tires we happen to have. Um, it also helps with our steering and our alignment. Um, make Now with the, with the uh, spare tire that we have, uh, make sure that it has the proper tread depth. Uh, make sure, as I had mentioned before, that it is also aired up to the proper PSI. You don't want to be putting on, like I said, you don't want to be putting on a tire that suddenly, when you put on, just sinks to the ground and you're running on rims and rubber because there's no proper air in it. All right, so make sure you're doing that for all of your tires. Uh, number eight, number eight, uh, prep for weather conditions. Um, it could be that breakdowns occur, uh, vehicle breakdowns occur because of the weather that you happen to be in. Not always, of course, but possibly. So if you are in an area that is especially warm or hot, make sure you're checking your cooling system before you go out. On vice versa, if you're going into an area that is cold, make sure you're checking your heating system before you go out. Um, <clears throat> uh, if you are going out, depending on what type of climate you're in, uh, weather appropriate fluids, okay? Weather appropriate fluids, either something that is designed uh, like an oil, for example, that is designed for, uh, like that has a, Oil that has a different vis viscosity depending on how warm or cold it is. Some, that's something to keep in mind. Check your radiator fluid. Make sure that it is, it is filled up properly. Um, All-terrain tires. Again, just another way for you to another way for you to make sure that you can handle the weather conditions that are that that could be coming for you. Um, if, you're have, if you're in the market for an AT tire, um, make sure that it has the three peak rated uh, snow mountain, sort of the S and M, snow and mountain. Make sure it has that rating on it. All right, that will be an indication that that tire is well designed, uh, hopefully, and is is ready to go to go out and about for you. Okay, so that's something to to keep in mind. Uh, number nine, number nine. After you have done any modification to your vehicle, test it out. Go out, do a little short hop. Make sure whatever modifications you have done, you know, you've changed a hose or you've put some new uh, some new fluid in or you've done something to your tire. You've maybe done. Uh, maybe you've done a little lift kit. Whatever you've done, make sure you check it out first. Uh, drive for 100, 200 kilometers, whatever, before you go out to make sure that everything is secure. There's no rattles. There's no shakes or shimmies, right? So double checking any modification you have in the car while it's driving. Listen, open up the window. Listen for sounds around you and think, hmm, that didn't that sound wasn't there before? Why is that happening? And then go back and basically find out what what is going on. Okay, um, the last thing, number ten, the last thing to do to prepare for emergency breakdowns or sorry, vehicle breakdowns is plan for emergency communication. If you are out and your vehicle breaks down, you might need to contact somebody in order to get rescue. So. Uh, a sat phone, uh, a CB, a personal location beacon. This is something that I talked about in the video last week. But in an absolute vehicle emergency, you want to be able to contact somebody 
to help you out. So having the ability to communicate to uh, somebody who is not in the team um, uh, uh, that can, you know, that can, that can then call somebody to bring you a truck to pull you out of whatever you're in, that is another thing that you can do uh, for yourself. These are preparatory steps, of course. Uh, some of them are in field, some of them are done beforehand, but your vehicle is your lifeline and you want to make sure that you are taking best care of it for sure. Okay, that's it for me. That's my top 10. Thank you very much. Stay tuned next week for my next top 10. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.